Hey everyone and welcome back. You know I love digging into a good self-help book and let me tell you, break, repair, heal, really did not disappoint. It's powerful stuff. It really got me thinking about intergenerational trauma. Yeah. You know, this idea that we inherit so much more than our genes from our families. Mm -hmm. Have you ever like stopped to think about how your grandparents' experiences might still be impacting you today? It's pretty mind-blowing when you really start to unpack it. Yeah. And that's exactly what this book encourages us to do. So intergenerational trauma at its core is this passing down of emotional and psychological wounds from one generation to the next. Right. And we're talking about the ripple effects of huge historical events like yeah. war, displacement, systemic issues like discrimination, or even just unhealthy family dynamics playing out over time. And Break, repair, heal does a fantastic job of explaining how this trauma can show up in our lives in really subtle ways. Oh, absolutely. Often without us even realizing it. Mm -hmm. Like, remember that section on conflict resolution? Yes. That was a light bulb moment for me. Yeah. It made me realize just how much my own knee-jerk reaction to arguments might be rooted in the way conflict was handled or not handled in my family growing up. That's such a relatable example of how these ingrained patterns can really sneak up on us. You know, the book tells the story about a woman named Sarah who always felt financially insecure despite having a stable income. Interesting. And as she digs deeper, she realizes her grandparents had lived through a devastating economic recession. And those anxieties around money had been unconsciously passed down through the generations. Wow, that's heartbreaking, but also strangely reassuring to know that these patterns often stem from somewhere. Right. It's not just us being bad with money or having poor conflict resolution skills. Like, there's a deeper history there. Exactly. And the book is very careful to emphasize that understanding these patterns isn't about placing blame. Right. It's about cultivating compassion. Yeah. Both for ourselves and for previous generations. And once we understand those patterns, yeah. the guidebook encourages us to ask ourselves this really powerful question. Okay. Are there any chains from my past that are no longer serving me. Wow. I mean, t talk about a call to action, right? Yeah. But how do we even begin to identify those chains, especially when they're so deeply ingrained? That's where the real work begins. And break, repair, heal, offer some really practical tools to guide us. Okay. It emphasizes the importance of therapy. Of course, yeah. And not just any therapy, but finding a therapist who understands your specific cultural background and the historical context of your family's experience. That makes so much sense. Yes. It's like you wouldn't go to a foot doctor for a heart problem, yeah, right? Exactly. Finding a therapist who gets your background and the unique challenges you might be facing is crucial. Absolutely. And the book goes a step further by introducing this concept of narrative therapy. Okay. It's this idea that we can actually rewrite our life stories. Instead of feeling defined by past trauma or those inherited patterns, we can choose to focus on our strengths, resilience, and create a new narrative for ourselves. I love the taking ownership of the narrative yes. and break, repair, heal. It doesn't just stop at therapy, right? It dives into all sorts of healing practices. Mm -hmm. One that really caught my eye was this idea of healing hands, which is essentially therapeutic massage. Interesting. It's fascinating how the book highlights these ancient practices that have been used for generations to address trauma. That really resonated with me too. It speaks to this idea that healing isn't just about talking through our problems. It's about addressing trauma on a physical and energetic level as well. Okay, so we've talked about therapy, we've talked about healing touch, but break, repair, heal, mm -hmm. also dies into the impact of intergenerational trauma on a really specific area of life, our finances. I do admit, I was a little surprised by how much space the book dedicates to this. Yeah. But it makes total sense. It does. It's such an important aspect that often gets overlooked. The book even explicitly asks, how were money and financial matters approached in your family growing up? And how has that influenced your current relationship with money? Interesting. It encourages us to examine those often unspoken beliefs and anxieties around finances that we might have unknowingly picked up from our families. And it's amazing how those early experiences can shape our financial habits. Absolutely. Often in ways we don't even realize, you know. Right. The book shares a really interesting story about a man named Michael who could never seem to save money. Okay. And he realized through therapy and self-reflection that his parents had grown up during a time of extreme poverty and had instilled in him this scarcity mindset, this fear that there would never be enough. 
that's such a classic example of how those anxieties can get passed down, yeah. even if they're not like explicitly stated. You know, Michael wasn't even alive during that period of poverty, but he was still carrying the weight of it right. in his financial habits. It really makes you think about those unspoken money messages we might be carrying around. Right. Like, were finances a source of conflict in your household? Were they shrouded in secrecy? Right. Did you learn to budget or invest, or was that never even discussed? Right. And break, repair, heal really encourages us to kind of get curious about these questions. Yeah. And to trace those patterns back through our family history. Like, it adds... In what ways do you notice patterns or beliefs about money repeating across generations in your family? Wow. It's about connecting the dots between our grandparents' experiences, our parents' approaches to money, and our own ingrained habits. It's like this fascinating and sometimes a little unsettling journey of financial archaeology. Yeah. But the book doesn't just leave us there, right? It goes beyond just identifying the problem and offers some really practical tools for healing those financial wounds. Exactly. It reminds us that awareness is the first step, but then we have to take action. Right. And one of the most powerful tools it introduces is this concept of generational dialogue. Have you ever considered sitting down with someone from a different generation in your family? Oh, yeah. Talking about these things, the challenges, the triumphs, the unspoken money messages. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. The book actually suggests reaching out to a family member from a different generation to have these very conversations about trauma, resilience, family patterns, finances. Like, it's about bridging that generational gap, mm -hmm. opening up lines of communication, and maybe even starting to heal some of those old wounds together. I love that. And break, repair, heal provide some really great conversation starters for these dialogues. Oh, it's out. not always easy, right, okay. <laughs> to initiate these kinds of conversations, especially if finances have always been a taboo topic in your family. Right. This book is like, here are the words. Go forth and have those tough but incredibly healing conversations. And speaking of healing, break, repair, heal also explores a variety of other healing practices, some of which I'd never even heard of before. Same here. It definitely opened my eyes to some new possibilities. So the book goes beyond traditional talk therapy and introduces readers to a whole range of options. Mm -hmm. Things like therapeutic massage, what it calls healing hands. Right. Prayer, cleansing rituals, drumming circles. It even talks about exploring traditional plant medicine. Mm -hmm. I mean, talk about a holistic approach to healing. It made me realize how much our modern world often overlooks these ancient practices. It's so true. And what I find particularly interesting is that the book encourages readers to explore practices that resonate with their own cultural and spiritual backgrounds. Yeah. It recognizes that healing isn't one size fits all. That's one of the things I appreciate most about break, repair, heal. Yeah. It really emphasizes the importance of honoring our unique cultural heritage and ancestral wisdom in our healing journeys. Mm -hmm. But it also acknowledges that sometimes we need a little extra support, right? Absolutely. And the book provides a really great reminder that healing doesn't happen in a vacuum. Right. We need to surround ourselves with people who understand what we're going through, who can offer encouragement, and who can provide a safe space to process these complex emotions. And break, repair, heal. Yeah. Doesn't just tell us to build a support system. It gives us practical advice on how to do it. Mm -hmm. Like it even poses those self-reflective questions. Who are the individuals within my community who can provide support in my healing journey? Right. And it goes beyond our immediate circle, too, yeah. encouraging us to connect with support groups, organizations, online communities dedicated to helping people heal from intergenerational trauma. It even lists some specific resources wow. for different communities, black women and girls. Black men, the LGBTQ plus community. Jeffrey, kind. break, repair, heal is saying, hey, we see you, we hear you. And there are people out there who want to help you heal. It really is. That's such a powerful message. And it really yeah. speaks to this idea that healing is a collective endeavor. Like we don't have to do this alone. There's strength in numbers. There's so much power in creating a community of support around something that has often been shrouded in silence and shame. It's about breaking those cycles, right? Yes. And not just for ourselves, but for yeah. future generations. I mean, one of the most impactful messages I took away from break, repair, heal, is that we have a responsibility to heal not just our own wounds, right, but also to interrupt the transmission of those wounds mm -hmm. to our children and grandchildren. That's what really hit home for me, too. It's like that Maya Angelou quote, when you know better, you do better. Yes. This guidebook 
empowers us with knowledge. Right. But it also calls us to action. It's about taking that awareness and using it to create a more loving, compassionate, and just world for ourselves and the generations that come after us. And it's not about being perfect, right? No. It's about those small, everyday acts of self-care, reflection, and conscious decision making. Yes. It's about catching ourselves when those old patterns rear their heads and choosing a different path. Exactly. It's about giving ourselves grace right, yeah. as we navigate this journey. Acknowledging that healing isn't a linear process. Right. There will be ups and downs. Yeah. Breakthroughs and setbacks. But even in those moments of struggle, break, repair, heal reminds us that we're not defined by our past traumas. Right. We have the strength, the resilience within us to break free and create a brighter future. It's like the book is giving us permission to embrace the messy, imperfect, and ultimately beautiful process of healing. It is. And to remember that seeking support along the way isn't a sign of weakness, it's a sign of courage. Absolutely. It takes immense strength to confront those deeply ingrained patterns yeah. and to choose a different path. And whether that support comes from a therapist, a spiritual practice, a supportive community, or all of the above, right. it's out there. We just have to be brave enough to ask for it. This deep dive into break, repair, heal, Hmm. has been eye-opening, to say the least. It's given us so much to think about. It really has. To reflect on, and most importantly, to act on. It's been an incredible conversation. And if listeners take away just one thing from this deep dive, yeah, I hope it's a renewed sense of hope and possibility. Healing is possible. Breaking free is possible. And creating a brighter future for ourselves and generations to come is within our reach. So beautifully said. And on that note, we'll leave you with this final thought-provoking question from Break, Repair, heal something to reflect on as you continue your own healing journey what knowledge do i currently possess about intergenerational trauma and its impact on my life until next time keep diving deep keep asking questions and keep choosing healing